Joining me now is Colonel Lee Ellis. He's uh, been with us before. We're always delighted to have him. He's the author of uh, a remarkable book on leadership called Leading with Honor, Leadership Lessons from the Hanoi Hilton. And he's here today, who has uh, also been a part of a uh, special Vietnam memorial dedication in Oklahoma today. Colonel, welcome back. It's a pleasure to talk to you again. Governor, it's so good to hear your voice. We've been actually listening on the radio. We're headed back from East Oklahoma down to the airport in Oklahoma City, and we just had a great uh, celebration up in Enid, Oklahoma today. Well, tell us about, uh, you, you were dedicating uh, a memorial wall, I think, in Enid today, right? Yes, they had purchased one of the moving walls that was going around the country. It's an 80% replica of the uh, Veterans Memorial, Vietnam Veterans Memorial Wall in Washington, D.C., and they just decided they wanted to have one there in Enid. It's a very patriotic community, and you know, it was a vision of one person and show you the power of leadership. This one person got people involved, got a committee, got fundraisers, and this community got behind it. And uh, today they dedicated this wall, and it's a beautiful 80% replica of what's there in Washington, D.C., and there were several thousand uh, people there, many, many veterans, and it was just a wonderful day. You know, Colonel, when I hear stories like this, and, and, and you mentioned one person had a vision and then uh, got the ball rolling and... Off it goes. We do forget the power of one person who is tenacious and just won't take no for an answer. And I'm thinking of all the people who are listening to us today, if each one of them would say, I can't do everything, but I can do something. I, I can help a veteran today. I can show my appreciation. Uh, that you know that, That's one of the things we're asking people to do is make a contribution today. Help us help the veterans. Um, you served in Vietnam. You served in a way that we hope no one ever has to do again, and that is spending years of your life in a uh, torturous environment uh, at the hands of uh, the enemy, never knowing if you were going to get home. Would you do it again if you had it to do all over again? Yeah, I think I would. I think uh, I was a military guy. I was trying to do what I was doing and serving my country, and I felt like I was doing the right thing. I think all of us did. And at our 40th reunion uh, of the POW's return, which we just had last May, uh, it was amazing how the positive attitude that everybody had. And we just felt like, you know, we wouldn't do it again. We wouldn't choose to do it again. But if we had to do it again, uh, it was uh, it turned out to be a positive experience. We wouldn't we wouldn't turn it again, turn it in, turn it back and not do it because we couldn't control that. But we all saw a lot of positives in it in our lives. We learned a lot, we matured, uh, gained a lot of wisdom, uh, perseverance, resilience, and just the bonds that we had there, uh, that we've all turned those uh, lemons into lemonade, I think. When, uh, when you think back on your military career and then your life uh, since, as you've led others in the area of leadership, lessons that you've learned from being in that uh, position, what is it about our veterans today that you wish every American knew and understood. Well, I think there are a couple. One is responsibility. When you go in the military, that's what they do in boot camp or whatever basic training you have. You learn to take responsibility. No excuses. You know, you, you can't point the finger at somebody else when it's your responsibility. You own it. And so you then you stay there and make it happen. And I think secondly is courage. Courage to do what you need to do to do your duty even when it feels scary or when it feels you have doubts or you feel uh, like maybe I can't do this, but you just, you know, as Colonel Reisner, my friend who passed away a couple of weeks ago, who was senior ranking officer among the POWs, I asked him one time, I said, Robbie, how did you bounce back and just lead in such difficult circumstances? He said, well, Lee, I learned in Korea, just hitch up your boots and go to it. And that's what I think we learned to do, uh, to have courage, to do our duty, and to uh, be responsible about it. So I think that's the, the great message that veterans bring back. Colonel Lee Ellis, my guest here on the Mike Huckabee Show. His book is called Leading with Honor, Leadership Lessons from the Hanoi Hilton, uh, a place that uh, he spent several nights. But I don't think they had a uh, rewards program so that you got points for staying as many nights as you did. And that's, that's too bad, uh, although I think if the... Uh, if the reward was you got to go back, I, I don't think you'd take them up on it. I'm pretty sure you'd say, no, thank you. 
Um, I, you know, I, I want to get into the fact that so many veterans, there are 850,000 unemployed veterans in this country. Uh, to his credit, the president spoke about that over the weekend on his radio address, and I, I'm just troubled that a lot of our veterans are coming home from uh, Afghanistan and from Iraq, and they're finding it real tough to get a job. And, uh, you know, I, I think this is just a, you know, a, a moral crisis that our country should do better by veterans. What are some ways that we can do better and help our veterans find good and decent jobs? Well, I think we have to believe in them. We have to believe that they have shown leadership ability. They've shown to be a part of a team. They've learned to own responsibility and to make some very difficult decisions. You know, a 19 and 20 year old veteran out there has to make life and death decisions all day long when the combat starts. And in the peacetime, they have to learn just to do the things that you have to do to keep the organization running. So I think we have to remember that they have certain skills and talents that we really need in the workplace. And number two, be willing to take a risk on them to bring them in and develop them, give them a chance to develop. Just like after World War II with the GI Bill, you know, our veterans got a chance to got to get a start, to get in, get some training, get some education, and then the jobs started to happen. Of course, part of this, of course, is the economy. We need the economy to grow jobs, and it's very difficult to do because there's so much uncertainty right now with the, the legislation and so on in terms of uh, businessmen hiring. So that would help a lot for the help veterans. And then just being able to take a risk and recognize they have certain talents and we can develop other talents. Veterans are very flexible. They've learned to be uh, resourceful. And I think that's very important in the workplace also. I think that they can adjust and make that adaptation with some good leadership. Colonel, uh, they have some tangible as well as intangible qualities. I'm thinking of the tangible things a lot of people don't recognize, that if a person's been in the military... They had a specific duty they were assigned. It may be uh, fixing airplanes or helicopters. It may have been something like fixing computers and making them work or programming them. But certainly some very valuable hands-on skills that many of these folks will have. But then I'm thinking about the intangibles. You know, you can teach somebody to do certain things, but you can't teach them how to have the character mm -hmm. of being able to follow orders, uh, be part of a team, understand... Uh, what it is to have other people depend on you and have to depend upon others. And sometimes I think those intangible qualities may be more valuable than even the specific skills, which are clearly obtainable. Would you agree? I definitely agree with that. And that's kind of going back to what I was saying about this idea of responsibility is that uh, somebody's got to own it. And if you own it, or even if your teammate owns it and your teammate needs help, you step in beside and give a hand and just... It's all about getting the mission done. And I think that's what veterans bring very uh, high focus toward accomplishing the mission. So if they're on your team, they're going to be focused on getting the job done. They're going to be trying to think like you would want them to think, to solve problems, to be resourceful, to get the job done. And that's the kind of people I think you want on your team is that you're, you're not looking for somebody who's just like, I'm going to do the minimum, then I'm going to go home. A veteran's going to say, what does it take to get the job done? And then I'll go home. Hmm. That alone is good reason to uh, to hire a vet. Colonel, always uh, a true honor to visit with you. And I want to say again, thank you, sir, for your service to this country and your continued service to uh, to improve the lives of people through your teaching and, and the uh, management skills that you teach others. Colonel Lee Ellis, if you have not read his book, let me encourage you to get it called Leading with Honor, Leadership Lessons from the Hanoi Hilton. I uh, look forward to visiting again very soon, Colonel. Thank you, Governor, and thank you for what you're doing for the veterans today. I hope everyone will join in and support you in this effort. I am. Well, thank you so much. Colonel Lee Ellis joining us here on the Mike Huckabee Show.